Production sources change event to event, so Kairos can change right there with them. Kairos has the ability to switch between many different formats, and so to be able to do that, we need to be able to bring in those different formats directly to your server. And to bring in those different formats, we're simply gonna set that up in our setup input settings. In our input settings menu, you'll see four main categories. IP, which is gonna to refer to our 2110 flows, SDI, which refers to our breakout cards, whether that's HDMI or SDI, NDI streaming, and compressed streaming sources. To set up a 2110 flow, we'll jump into our IP category here, select the input that you wanna manipulate. In our case, we'll start with input one. Now that I have input one selected in our main menu here, I can jump over to the right side and I have configurations or parameters that I can now impact dealing with input one. The first thing I'm going to do is jump down to my video IP settings, click our pencil here, and that's gonna give me flow information. So this is where I wanna type in my multicast address for that 2110 flow. For us today, we're gonna to use the IP of 239.20.1.101. And that flow will be coming in on port 20,000. So now that I've entered that multicast IP, I'm done with this menu. If I need to um, delineate different multicasts at a source level, I can enter in a source IP here. Or if I'm using a dash seven redundant network, I do have a secondary port I can spin up and enable in this menu as well to enable that hit list failover. For today, I'm just entering a primary IP. So now that I've done that, I can click OK. We can see that IP is saved here. Now I simply just need to enable that flow and Kairos will automatically grab and attach to that multicast IP address. Now that I've done that, we can see we're getting a 1080i signal coming in on input one. You're also noticing a status of not in sync. This not in sync message is just letting you know that that input is getting a frame sync enabled on it on the switcher. To configure an SDI input using one of our SDI breakout cards, simply jump to the SDI category, select the input you wanna manipulate. So again, we'll use our input one here for SDI. Come over to our right-hand side, our parameter view on the right. I can drop down to the, the module that I wanna see. So all of your modules will populate here. If you have HDMI, let's say we wanna do HDMI for input one, I select HDMI. I'm not done yet, I still need to designate the port on that card. For HDMI, there's only a single port, so simply drop down to HDMI 1. Now I have configured that module to accept signal from port 1 on module 1. Enable that module, and now we're able to grab that HDMI input, and we're getting a 1080p signal. If I want to do the same configuration with an SDI card, let's move down to SDI 2 here. Now on our module dropdown, instead of selecting module one, which is an HDMI module, I will grab module two, which is a 12G module coming in. Select module two. Now I can select the port on that module. If I want to use 12G, it's gonna be SDI one. Or if I wanna use each one of these ports as a single 3G source, simply select it. I can leave this UHD type in auto, so it'll auto sense the signal coming in, enable that input, and now I'm getting a 1080p signal coming in on SDI module two, input one. To continue building that out, of course, you would repeat those steps, select the correct module and the correct port on those modules and enable that input. To bring in an NDI input, simply jump to the NDI category, select the input that you wanna manipulate. So we'll start with NDI one. Now, instead of having an IP address or a port number, we simply have a drop-down menu of all the NDI sources being broadcast on your network. Um, for today, let's grab this UE50 camera, select the UE50, and all we need to do now is enable that input. Now that that light switch is turned on and that source is enabled, we'll see that Kairos is able to pick up this 1080p signal coming in as NDI. The last category of inputs we have here is our compressed streaming inputs. On our KC1000, we have the ability to bring in eight streams here. To bring in a stream, simply jump to that stream, select stream one in this case to build it. Now select the type of stream that you'd like to use. Um, for today, let's use SRT caller. 
We're using SRT caller, so we need to type in the IP address of the stream that we want to grab. Click on the pencil. This will put us in edit mode. Now I can come in and type the IP address of the SRT camera that I want to use and the port number. So that's going to be 2020 for now. And then very important, once you enter edit mode, you also need to exit edit mode. Now that I've exited edit mode, you can see that this IP address is locked here in the port. Now to enable that stream, I simply just turn on our little light switch in the upper right, give it a minute to lock onto that signal, and I'm able to see I'm getting a 1080-29P signal coming in as a compressed SRT stream. As you continue to build your environment here with different inputs and outputs, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner a resource monitor. This is giving you an idea of the bandwidth that you're using on your input side. So we can see here that the NDI stream and this SRT stream are using LAN 1's network connection, and then all of our 2110 input flows are coming in over our QSFP1 here as well. So we get a real-time bandwidth monitor of how much information is being ingested into Kairos. Jumping over to our output settings side, this is going to operate and feel very similar to our input settings. So if we look at something like an IP output, you'll see here basically our same parameter menu exists as we select an input. The big difference here being instead of having a locked format like we do on the input side, now on the output side we have the ability to literally select from any broadcast format or any broadcast standard that you would want to work in. So for this environment here, we're working with a lot of 1080p sources, so we can see we've selected that on input one. If I needed to change any of that information, I can simply drop down and maybe I need to send 1080i to a monitor. I can make that selection here, and now I'm outputting 1080i in my IP output one. All of the IP address information is gonna be the same. Of course, this difference being that instead of entering an IP that you wanna to attach to a flow, you are now setting an IP address number to output a flow. Simply enter in your IP address here and the port number and enable that output. We do support Dash 7 redundancy, so that can be configured in this menu as well. Once all of that's good and done, we can see we have an OK message on our IP send out. For SDI and HDMI outputs, again, this is gonna be very similar to the input side. Simply select the output that you want to manipulate, select the module and port from the drop down menu. We can see we're already outputting SDI output one, port one for SDI out one. Again, format is selectable on the SDI side as well. So feel free to work in different standards across different outputs. Moving from SDI to NDI, to enable an NDI input in Kairos, it's very simple. You only need to give your stream a stream name. So if we wanted to name this TRN for training, I've now given that stream a name. I can select the output resolution I wanna work in up to 1080p. So if I select that and turn it on, now I've just enabled and started an NDI output. If I do not enter a stream name, but I enable that output, I will get an error message. So the only requirement of an NDI output is that the stream is given a name. To correct this, of course, I can just enter in a name here and now I get that OK message. Now I'm broadcasting that second channel of NDI out on my network. And lastly, our streaming outputs here. Again, these menus will change um, based on the type of stream you select. You can see today we have two streaming outputs already enabled, and both of those are in SRT listener mode. But to configure those, simply select the streaming output, select the format you wanna work in. This time it's gonna be limited to 1080 or 720. Next, grab the type of stream that you want to use, whether it's RTP, RTMP, or an SRT. If you select, based on what you select here, the menus will change. So something like SRT listener, you'll only be needing a port number to enter versus SRT caller. You'll need to enter the server IP that you want to hit and the port information there. Once that information is entered correctly, if we go back to listener, for example, you will get this OK message letting you know that Kairos is streaming that compressed stream output. As you add and subtract outputs in Kairos, you'll notice you have a resource monitor down here at the bottom. 
This output utilization is your ability to output sources. So as you add more IPs, as you add more 2110 flows, as you add more SDI flows, you'll see this meter begin to creep up up to 100%. And then you'll also get a real-time monitor of the bandwidth that those sources are using, whether that's LAN 1 and 2 for your compressed and NDI streams, or your QSFP 1 and 2 for your 2110 flows. If we jump back to our 2110 flows here in our IP category, if I were to start turning some of these outputs on and off, you'll see our output utilization jumps. And the reason this isn't giving a, a fixed number, you don't say have a fixed number of 20 outputs or 10 outputs in our system, it's because you can mix and match across the different formats. So outputs are really based on process bandwidth versus a fixed number. So we can see here down at input 16, we have a 29P source. And at output 15, we have a 60P source. Those two sources are gonna use different bandwidths. So they're not created equal when it comes to output utilization. If I were to enable this output 15, let's say, now that it's enabled because it's a 60P source, I'm using more output utilization than I would if I were to jump down to output 16 or even output number one, which is a 1080i source. So now that I've done that, we can see my meter has only jumped 2% versus the 5% for output 15. So it's really just a math equation at that point as far as mixing and matching your output utilization. Moving from the input to output side, you'll see the settings are very similar, but on the output side, now we have the ability to select our own format versus being locked on the input side.